Greetings, geeks. Welcome to episode 638 of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda, and joining me on this fine Tuesday, we have Chris DeBona. Hello. And Rob Roseboom. Hey there. Gentlemen, it has been a glorious weekend with in, during which nothing uh, of interest happened to anyone except for <laughs> Richard Branson. Yeah. Wait, what, what did Richard Branson do? Did he went really high. He got so high. He got high? <laughs> oh, Super I think that's high. the first time for, 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 for Sir Richard. Sir Richard. Uh, do we want to start with this or do you want to talk about cool things first? Well, let's... let's Actual and interesting advances. I mean, well, we already mentioned it. Might as well talk about it. We're yeah, in, all right. in for a minute, in for a, in for a mile. Uh, yeah. All right. So the story is that Richard Branson, after uh, many years, like he started that Virgin Space thing like 15 years ago. Virgin Galactic. Uh, got, uh, got up to what may or may not be space because it turns out that we argue about everything. Mm. Uh, and uh, so... Maybe not space, maybe space, maybe six people got to experience about as much time as a third of a vomit comet ride. Uh, got to see the curvature of the Earth, pretty cool. Uh, the best quote that I read is that uh, this is a really inspirational message to kids. If they work really hard, they go to school, they study, uh, you know, they, they stay home on, uh, you know, they don't go on vacations, uh, they really do everything that they possibly can, then maybe their boss will get to go to space. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy a good record album from Juice Newton from Virgin Records and you listen to it after listening to it on Virgin Radio and you take the train into London on Virgin Trains, then you fly on Virgin uh, Atlantic over to the United States and, and buy another record, maybe, maybe Richard Branson can go kind of near space, but not really. Yeah. I don't have a strong opinion on uh, whether and what the what the lines for space ought to be, uh, but well, I did. I do. I read I read a good article, which is that basically it's reasonable for us to toss Alan Shepard and just say, "Look, if you didn't orbit, you didn't really go to space. Like you did, a, you got really high, uh, but like let's just call orbiting space like one orbit. You did it. I, I like that as a definition. It seems a lot easier than." all of the weird measures that they use about like atmospheric density and like when can a foil of a plane support you or not. It's like, it's like how this, how the Voyager stories, we, we get a new Voyager story every three years about how it's crossed some new threshold that definitely means hey, hey, that hey, Voyager's hey, outside hey, of the hey, solar hey. system now. I tease Voyager out of love. That is an innovative spacecraft doing things that has never been done before using technology that dates back about 60 years now. Yeah, this sure. is not, that, um, you know, this, honestly, what happened with Branson is if he put a satellite into uh, the stratosphere and then it exploded or it oh, fell to Earth and he dude. said, look, here's what I put in the stratosphere. This is uh, honestly, this is the billionaire equivalent of a weather balloon camera. People have done it before. Sure, it's neat. Don't know that I would spend a billion dollars on it. OK. How high did the uh, Red Bull guy that jumped, like, parachuted down? Uh, the how... guy who went up less than Alan Eustace? Uh, but how high was that? It was like 100,000 feet, right? Uh, I believe so. But the Red Bull guy had the marketing. Um, but the Alan Eustace jump was higher. Uh, well, what's the record for uh, a human being in a balloon, I guess? Yeah, okay. So, a uh, human... Well, so Alan... Took a balloon up and went to, let's see, went to 80 something kilometers. I'm sorry. 68,000 feet. He, no, no. He reached 135,000 feet. Oh, so man. I typed kilometers. human being balloon altitude record into a famous search uh, engine, and I got 68,000 huh. feet as the result. Well, that's wrong. All and, right. You know, I'm going to submit a ticket. Alan hit 130. <laughs> I, thank you. Uh, you uh, Go slash bad search. Or, <laughs> I, I don't remember what we call it. Term. I don't know what um, Bing. I don't know how you do that in Bing. Oh, Bung. Oh, it, Bung. Yeah, yeah. Go Bung. And... Yeah, you go to Ask Jeeves and you say, I got a bad bung. I typed in web and, crawler. Yeah, got a hot wire. Ooh, hot uh, wire. So, <laughs> so in his balloon, he only went to 50,000 feet. So. 
Okay, so the airplane went up to, Branson's okay. airplane got to like 61,000, then they rocketed it up to 250. Was that where they stopped? Uh, they hit 100 kilometers, I think, right? So They had the foot measure on the live stream, but... I know, it was like, well, this is Imperial crap. Also, it stuttered way too much. I mean, like, good on and, the guy. And the color was like white on white. Yeah. Like the white background, the lit up white when he got to the Somebody didn't the uh, white. Somebody put forth exactly the same amount of tech support uh, in their project as we do on uh, the Average Geeks in Space broadcast. Yeah. I mean, uh, the thing is, you know, okay, he had fun. I yeah. think everyone had fun on that flight. Um, it does seem like a little pointless, though. I mean, I'm more that's interested. All, that's all I gotta say. Well, and th this is the other thing too. He's charging 250 grand. I think that's the goal uh, for that, and that's just not well, worth it. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'd rather spend I mean, seven grand on a vomit comment and get get 15 minutes of weightlessness. I mean, I guess it's pointless, but you know, what was his intention? Do you did you think he was going to do science up there or something? I like <laughs> this. This I is like... obviously a stunt. Yep. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, and we're talking, and we're about, talking it right about it now, so I think it did a pretty good job. Yep. Right? It, it did exactly what he intended it to do. You're yeah. not wrong. Well, they say that they have 625 people who have reserved spots at the $200,000 rate, um, which pays for nothing. You know, well, I mean, the development of this thing over the last X years, the people who died in Burt Rutan's shop, you know, it's... <sighs> I hear you, man. I like. I, I I don't know. I don't know to make 125 million dollars, and they've been working on this for five years. They've been basically running an aerospace company for five years with hundreds of people. This is not going to pay for itself. I wouldn't buy SPCE. I guess that's what you're saying. Hot stock tips. Hot stock tips from Chris DeBona. All right. I uh, of the of the uh, forthcoming space tourism option so bezos mm -hmm. goes up in a week yep. or so uh, and they're gonna go higher right they're going uh ah that's a good question i don't think they're going much higher i mean blue origin is i mean i, I see blue origin as more of a real rocket company right um all right, I'm Googling how high is Jeff Bezos? <laughs> the answer yeah, is five foot Bezos. seven. <laughs> Rocket. Well, he's, he's a, you know, that's the right height for an astronaut. At least. Five seven? Yeah, sure. Save some uh, weight. Yeah, they're taking Blue Origin. Yeah, so. Bezos uh, is going twice as high or 100,000 feet higher, it looks like. They're, yeah, they're going to 328,000 feet, 100 kilometers, which is really the carbon line. And then. So so Would he's going up to 80 kilometers. He's going roughly 60,000 Bezos high in the sky. <laughs> Assuming he didn't lie on in his height like most men do. Right. Right. No, he wouldn't have lied. I mean, if you're five seven, what's the lie? <laughs> you don't he's lie. Five, five, you know? It could be Tom Cruise. I'm five seven. Shut up, guys. I'm not five seven. All uh, right. Think about it. Five seven is a good height for an astronaut. Totally. You, know? You're, you, you can wear the medium to small space suit, you know, the EVA suit. Yep. I mean, it's not embarrassing when you don't have to choose the extra large urinary condom. Right. Well, apparently, well, you heard the story. Yeah, right? we talked but about it last week. No, okay. No. Uh, uh, but who's the dude that you hate so much? The giant hulking man from Altered Carbon? Who's an astronaut in For All Mankind? I don't hate him. The guy that you personally hate and told me... No, no, I think he's cursed. The guy that you told me while we were offline that you could totally defeat in a fist fight? <laughs> there was never a moment where I said that. And also that his, his mom like was dumb. punched in the face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But my yeah, problem I, with For All Mankind is yeah. the idea yeah, that... There's no world where Joel Kinnaman punches me in the face because <laughs> I think he's cursed, you know? I mean, if anything, you know, For All Mankind is showing that he can make it to a second season. That's true. Know? Maybe he broke the curse. That's true. Maybe all you had to do was uh, smooch uh, Patty Spivey from Flash. Ooh. And that is what broke mm. the curse. I'm just saying, my problem with Joel Kinnaman is that... Uh... You have a problem with Joel Kinnaman? <laughs> no, is no. That, <laughs> is that he, he won't wrestle you? He won't punch Chris Bono in the he face. Won't, he won't get liquor, you know, uh, you know, lubed up and wrestle you there, Rob? Yep. No, uh, it's that uh, he's just way too large to have been uh, an Apollo uh, uh, astronaut. Yeah. 
Like that's yeah, just weird like casting. Almost six three, he's six two and a half, right? Right, but also he's like yeah. a wall of muscle. Oh no, no, he's a he's got like a twelve pack. Like they have a six pack or an eight pack. I mean, All right, right, let's ask Bing. How much does Joel <laughs> Kinnaman <laughs> weigh? Joel Kinnaman out. All right, uh, he weighs. He's probably like two thirty. Whoa, one hundred and eighty pounds. That can't be right. Wow. No, this is no, a different. Can't this be. is Remember, a different he's a Hollywood person. This is a different Hollywood. Joel Kinnaman. He's a Hollywood person, man. Six two and one hundred eighty five is totally possible because you know they always skip leg day because they are. They skip leg about. day. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he's just a dense fire plug of a man. He has not like he's got zero percent fat. You know that, right? So, how much is ninety two kilograms? <sighs> it's like two hundred and ten pounds. Two hundred two. Dude, he weighs less than me. I'm depressed now. All right, well, never mind. You know, all you need to do is is not skip leg day, and <laughs> that's right. You know, get lifting, baby. I'm go trying. into your holodeck and you know, go fight some uh, some Richard Bransons. See, I'm so lazy that I even want video games to cheat for me. Uh, so I have this th this link up uh, where there's an app that's now using machine learning uh, to track your uh, the oh, movement the of thing. Yeah. first person shooters. Uh, and just, and it's, it's one of those things now where it's not even like a plugin or whatever. It's just a machine learning thing. That's looking at the screen and, uh, targeting and boom. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Well, <laughs> those noobs are going to hate me when I pwn their asses. Look at this ridiculous thing. You want to, do you have the screen up? It's not showing us what you're seeing. There we go. So here's your, uh, what was the cartridge that you'd plug in to cheat at game? The Game Genie? Game Genie. This is the oh, Game yeah. Genie for the modern age. Right? Right yep. there. Titan 2. That makes sense to me. This is all good. It's an aimbot in hardware. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. This was like when they made those controllers that had auto uh, push buttons. Mm -hmm. So that when you played uh, Galaga Street Fighter <laughs> back in the day, you could always power up Blanca and basically be electrified the entire time. <laughs> Made them almost indestructible. Yeah. My children yesterday crushed me at Super Smash Brothers uh, for the better part of uh, the the morning, and cool. so now I have to uh, like dig up Street Fighter and Tekken uh, at, on the Raspberry Pi and uh, like see if I can actually defeat my children at games that are 30 years old just to feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. This is, I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering like what the impact will be on the, uh, the Billy, what's his name's the hot sauce guy. Uh, <laughs> Sue's everybody. Uh, what's his name? Billy Mitchell, Billy Mitchell. Captain like, are people going to start saying Billy, like everyone can buy this except for Billy Mitchell. You know, like or something. So, is that how like anybody can use Vant that new black except for the people who patented Vanta Black? Yeah, probably something. I, I, I'm sure there's something. Like that. All right, let me see. I lost my place on the taco zone like a sucker. Uh, there's actually been a couple of stories lately about uh, video game cartridges being sold for Looney Tunes amounts of money. There was a Zelda cartridge sold for like 700 grand. And then yes. less than a week later, there was a Mario 64 cartridge that sold for 1.5 million. I'm a little surprised about the Mario 64 because like that's 10 years newer, 12 years newer. Well, so, OK, I'm going to ask what I always ask. Did it sell for money or did it sell for Ethereum? Ooh. You know, usually when it's physical objects, it's cash. It's the NFTs that are buying for uh, for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Yeah, well, it's still in its like best buy box, you know, but does it still have the hanger tag? Uh, it looks like it. That's the I read once that the hanger tag is like the big thing when you're buying a game pre in box. If the hanger tag is still there, it's worth more. I don't understand this part of collecting. Oh, this is what you don't understand? Well, the, I mean, like, there were a billion of them made, and the idea that you have the best one. I don't, I don't, like, that doesn't really interest me, I guess. I would, 
like like we were talking about the movie prop auctions. Like I would absolutely yeah. love a screen used, you know, piece of lore from Star Wars. You know, that would be awesome. But there's one of that. You know, this is this is there were 50 million made and that might be the best one that's left, I guess. But you don't even get to play it. It just sits on a shelf. I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I get collecting. I do. But I'm also not, not a billionaire going into space. So I'm not going to go spend $1.5 million on, you know, a buck worth of plastic. Right. And, I just and, don't care. And Chris, uh, has a fa- Chris has a family that he loves and that loves him back. So he doesn't need to buy these things. <laughs> to oh. feel good about himself. Oh. <laughs> See, well, I don't. I don't I, like I have my fun collectibles. You know, I mean, you know, I have fun things. You know? See, I don't love my children enough to buy them original Nintendo sixty four cartridges. I only love them enough to pirate a yeah. ROM. I, I bought one of these things. I think it was ten euros, right? And it's a uh, it's a backup tape from the Large Hadron Collider. That's sure, fun, sure. Right? That that was a ten euros well spent, and then I brought it back from Europe, so you know, some cost of the trip, right? But that's but a souvenir. That's exciting, you know. I, yeah, that's this is an and, authentic LHC data tape souvenir. Contains and, one terabyte of LHC data, six hundred thousand proton proton collision events. How exciting is that? That's science. That's I'm mm-hmm. never gonna read this tape. Just for the record. Do you even right? have a device capable of reading that tape? Yeah, I could probably get one. It's just DLT. So the answer is no. <laughs> so, so the answer is no. But All right. It's not, impossible to get you know and like I've got <laughs> but you CSA just never I lab i've got the csa i lab tape around here somewhere and you know that that's that's interesting that has the birth of the fsf in backup form you know that's pretty important sure right but so like there are versions of collecting that i 100 percent understand like i understand the idea of go, saying i want to set out and collect there's like what 500 original nes games there's a documentary on Amazon about a guy who tried to collect 500 NES games over the course of like a summer or whatever and get mm-hmm. 500. I understand that. That makes sense to me. It's just the idea that you would have uh, that one item that's uh, that's still mint in box that is worth a million dollars. That's 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 weird to me. But I mean, then again, you know, maybe it's that thing where uh, six months from now uh, he flips it uh, and p- turns it for more profit. That movie is not really worth watching uh but it is interesting if you don't know a lot about the nintendo collecting space there's too much of those guys talking uh yeah. and not enough of just like interesting bits because there's a lot of interesting stuff about uh collecting nintendo cartridges like the rarity of different cartridges and like the eras in which they different they came out so there's, there's it's an interesting subject yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, though. You don't want to watch a, a a bunch of jerks just talking about, you know, collecting stuff for, right. say, for, a half you know, hour. Yeah. No way. That's crazy. Or, Tell me about your tape, niche, Chris. Or niche stuff that almost only they are interested in. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, what the hell is that about? What kind of narcissistic a-holes put that stuff online, you know? That's right. That's right. Uh, well... Uh, here's another one. Uh, smugglers. Oh, you got the programming jacket. We can no, do no, that's it. okay. Let's do this. Yeah, the smugglers. So I like this one. This, yeah. this is a crazy story. So smugglers uh, were caught uh, trying to cross the Chinese border with CPUs, uh, lots of them hidden in their cavities and crevices and uh, pits. I don't know where. The, mm-hmm. But uh, this guy was uh, like he had hundreds of CPUs attached. I hope that he at least had the decency to like do them pin side out. Uh, I think these are Intel, so aren't they Bulgar array uh, on the bottoms instead of pins? Uh, so uh, that makes it a little more a little understandable, a little more comfortable. A little uh, more palatable for your various, you know, body purses, crevices. Mm. So yeah, uh, the the main one was... Yeah, uh, they're Bulgar array, so that's good. 123 grand worth of CPUs. Uh, he had 256 of them. They're uh, i7s and i9s. Yeah. Uh, s- attached to locations such. <clears throat> I like that they say such as the calves and torso. Because we all torso. know, we and all know that cleft. they are hidden in places that are not <laughs> calves and torsos. But they have the decency not to say it. Yeah. Well, I like how he's like, I'm not going to handle these things with anything but rubber gloves. <laughs> well, after they've been stretched, I know where these chips have been. This so. this gross fellow decided to stick it in his crevices and cross a border. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. they got pictures. They got oh, pictures. no, I don't want that. Oh, see, that's not so bad. They're just saran wrapped to his leg. That's really something. That would absolutely set off a metal detector, though, right? I don't, I don't yeah, I don't, well, he passed the Macau border, not like a, uh, an international. Gotcha. Thing. So I've act- I haven't been on this border, but I've been on the Hong Kong Shenzhen border and there's no scanning. It's just, you know, a n- bunch of lines to fill out your paperwork, you know, so. Fair enough. Because um, remember, Hong Kong and Shenzhen are the same country. So it's an economic border, which is weird, you know, and it's a political border, but it's not a country border. So same thing's true with Macau. It's so weird. It's uh, super weird, you know. It's like it'd be like having a border between, you know, Grand Rapids and 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 Ann Arbor, you know. I would like that. I don't trust people in GR. Well, or Spokane and Seattle, you know. It's like I know they're different. They're politically different. There's, you know, even different I, weather. But maybe it would be more like the difference between uh, the UP and the Lower Peninsula in Michigan. You got to cross that bridge, yeah. and so when you're <laughs> you're going to strap the, your CPUs to your calves. Uh, before you bike across the bridge. No, 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 no. You strap like a vaccine <laughs> to Ooh. your leg, you know, because n- otherwise, you know, people will know you have it. They don't. They don't admit it around there. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, did you watch the videos of the uh, robot trying to put jackets on people? I did not. I've <laughs> seen things like this before. Yeah. It's usually oh, CCL did. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see if they they've got it. It's just look. Oh, wait, here. Boop. Well, it's funny. She's got a glove with indicators on it, so the robot Tracking knows dots. where her hand is. Yeah. It's it's just uh, when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and driving cars and stuff, I always think about this uh, and things like this. This is the thing that you struggle to teach your 18-month-old yeah. kid. Put on your own shirt. Like... That's yeah. hard when you're 18 months. And this is the state of machine learning for some subjects, at least. It, wow. It was, it, it is kind of funny to watch how slowly and carefully it tries to put the first arm on. It's, uh, and like sometimes it gets, it gets too cautious and it just stops. <laughs> well, but in this case, that robot arm probably has the physical ability uh, to injure that woman dramatically. Uh, well, you can see she's leaning like this, but the reality uh, um, is, if it goes nuts, it could cleave her yeah. head in. I mean, that is yeah. a powerful robot. I mean, sure, but uh, one of the their solution was to teach it that it's okay to hit people. <laughs> <laughs> the same lesson that I taught to my eighteen month yeah. old when uh, I was trying to teach him to wear a shirt. <laughs> well, that is some. It's, I mean, I'm glad they're doing the work. Sure. But uh, I think it, it can happen a little faster. For sure. Well, this is this is a thing that we that uh, like in the sci fi trope tropey movie where you uh, raise up an artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, there's two versions of this story, right? There's like I downloaded everything to you from a pre existing source, and so you have all this data that you need in order to function. And then there's but my you had to teach everything to yourself in order to learn and function. Right, we've seen movies with both of those premises, uh, uh, like Mother uh, recently. Oh, I guess that was different because she was te- that was the- she was teaching the real kid. But anyway, I, it's <laughs> sorry, it's been a long it's weekend. Okay. It uh, was an okay movie. It wasn't great. No, uh, but uh, no, it just I, I always like the idea that this stuff is hard for computers to learn. Maybe not that hard, but yeah. uh, we'll get there eventually, right? Oh wow. Sure. Sure. What? Uh, my uh, there's something making a terrible noise in my house. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a jet. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like a thunder or something. No, there's uh, a very low flying jet. Uh, we've been having a lot of those lately, which I assume means that we're going to war with those monsters in GR. Yeah, that's that must be it. Yeah. Um, yeah. For us, it's there's overflights for supply planes to Everett, where they make the the airplanes you know mm. so the dream lifters are pretty heavy i think 
Uh, Charlie Robinson, who played Mac on Night Court, he died at 75. Just... I, this is becoming old person obituary time. Right. You know? But, you know, I love Night Court, man. These these people could do no wrong in my mind. That's time claims us all. So rest in peace, Charlie Robinson. You were awesome. Yep. Uh, and just j- just a little bit too early to get a shot for a cameo on the reboot, right? They're rebooting Night Court. Of course, they're rebooting Night Court. Yeah. Oh man! If it I'm was made sure in the that. '80s, it's getting a reboot. Actually, we're now we're to the point now where it's going to start being rebooting the '90s. It's awesome. All right. So, should we get Cliff in here and start talking about Black Widow? Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last hey. thing on my list. Cliff. I I Where hope that. Uh, gonna talk. BW. Since you guys are both hating on uh, 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 hating Loki, is such a strong. Oh God, yeah, we should talk about Loki too. But yeah, I finally watched episode nine, and I have to be honest with you, I felt it was like a latter day post Matt Smith, um, maybe Matt Smith esque Doctor Who episode, and a middling one at that. I'm just like, why are they running? Or they, this is very silly. So I'm with you. Uh... I don't think Loki's very good, to be honest with you. I like the very first episode, and I think the third episode was abysmal. That was the low point in the series. The rest is just kind of meh. I agree. I I agree with you. I agree with you on the third episode, but I've enjoyed the fourth and fifth episode. I think that they're they're doing what I want from the show now. They're having fun. That's all I want. Uh, Yeah, I I want them to make sure I have fun. That's what I want. Well, well, you know, I am having this, fun. Yeah. Um, so I have to admit, I wonder if like in the early, early, early days of, you know, the, the bad racist days of Marvel, like the Black Widow program, you had Black Widow, you had Blonde Widow, you had, you know, racist. Red. Well, yeah, for like a Native American widow. No, no Russian. <laughs> right. For, for Russians. But like, I, I wonder if like they wanted to go in that direction. Like, is this gal blonde widow like Florence Pugh? Because is it all hair color? And in in I, my household, we refer to her only as the Pugue. The Pugue. Uh, the Pugue. Yeah. Well, you don't want to catch the Pugue. You yeah. don't want to catch the Pugue. I mean, I'd catch the Pugue. She seems very cute and fun. Maybe not sure. so much in Midsommar. Oh right, she was the Midsommar person. So. She but, was also in uh, Fighting With My Family, and I didn't realize which that. Which is a fantastic movie. It was great. I didn't realize that that was her until I that's looked. That's really interesting. That's her? That's her, yeah. So it's because I looked up her. Uh, oh, I, I her knew she was before. in Midsommar, but I didn't know she was in Fighting With My Family. I was like, wow. I, she... I didn't know about Mids- Midsommar or whatever. That's a great movie, too. It. I've heard it's not good. Midsommar? Oh, no, it's really fun. I that's mean... the one where they just kill everybody, right? Midsummer? It's, it's just like, like a ha- haunted or like a like a cult, like an island cult thing, you know? Yeah, I don't think a it's little a bit, island. A, it's a little bit, wick, a little bit wicker manish. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's no fighting with my family, which is fantastic. Fighting with my family is just a good fun movie, uh, but the Pugue is with Scarlett Johansson uh, in mm-hmm. Black okay. Widow, and uh, I enjoyed eighty percent of this movie a lot. So. So I uh, was going into this with absolutely no expectation that I would like it at all. I was dreading having to watch the backstory of Black Widow <laughs> and all that crap. <laughs> and was really looking forward to the Taskmaster. Sure. And what I oh, got was oh, a no. movie that was completely the opposite. I actually kind of enjoyed sort of the family-ish dynamic of... Uh, of of them and uh, their their you know fake dad family. and mom. Yeah, uh, I found that very interesting. I d- have no idea why they did what they did to the taskmaster. I mean, yeah. he isn't even the taskmaster. Nope. And I could give a shit about the main <laughs> villain. <laughs> All of that was nonsense. As you soon mean as they Draco? When they when they get to the red room, Ugh. the whole movie could just be thrown out as far as I was concerned. But up until then, I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought it was kind of fun. And uh, I really like some of the ongoing bits and gags, like her making fun of Scarlet for always doing the 
and the pose. pose, such a poser, <laughs> stuff like that. That was, uh, was one great. of the few highlights for me. I I actually really liked the beginning, you know, Americans esque, you know, yeah. Ohio stuff. Like, oh, oh, they're like a sleeper agent. That's kind of cool and interesting. And 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 the little peaks of 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 uh, Red Guardian strength as they were escaping was kind of like, oh, that's exciting. <laughs> I don't think they were little peaks. The guy was literally hanging on the wing of an airplane, shooting machine guns. I mean. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, the way they, the first thing he does is he lifts that trailer. Yeah, he trailer flips out of the, the trailer. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ooh, look at that. That's exciting. He's ooh, powerful. Yeah. And I was enjoying it. And then I'm not going to lie to you. And maybe I was just sleepy, but I was asleep 25 minutes into it. I was like, I've got it. I can't do this. And I just shut it off. It, there does seem to be a correlation between television programs that you sleep through and television programs that you don't like. Yeah, I just, I find them really dull. It's like Man of Steel. It took me like four viewings to not fall asleep. And of course, I was watching it on an airplane. So, you know. You to, uh, so you're really you living know, up for the yeah. director's vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Black Widow, I was watching on, you know, the fat 120 inches. But it's like, yeah, it was, it was hard to enjoy. It, you know, it's that thing that we've talked about a million times. Never was anything at stake. And I, I made it to the prison break. And I was just like. I don't care. Let's well, see. That's where I, I really enjoyed that part. I just don't care. And and I, I was thinking of all the other people in the prison who were crushed by the avalanche and yeah. how stupid the the swing to get down and then to pick him up. And I'm like, you know, that that would rip his arm out of the socket. I don't, you know, I don't care how strong he is. And Bye. Bye. So yeah. I uh, uh well. I I was totally fine and with the, the movie. And when the rock showed up and she she and she, she closed line pile drive in, yeah, that yeah. was pretty cool, you know. But you um, know, right right after that sequence is one of my favorite parts where they land. Oh, so I should stay. And yeah. he, they land, and he is like gushing with pride at how his two little girls have turned into <laughs> such awesome murderers, yep. right? <laughs> and he's that like, you know, right? Maybe I should stay for that. Like, I can't remember the exact line, but something like, your <laughs> book must be dripping in yep. blood. Your I'm ledger. So proud of you. Your ledger like, must ledger. be absolutely dr- gushing with red. <laughs> yeah, he was just so happy for them, so proud. Yeah. And that was the parts of the movie that I liked the best. I, I, I liked David everything Harper about it until, yeah, he's great. Uh, I liked it until they reveal the location of the Red Room. Because uh, it was at, in Grand Rapids. Yeah, it was in Grand Rapids, and I don't wow. trust those guys. Yeah. Um, so we put up the border. That's right, <laughs> the border wall, the, the Ann Arbor GR <laughs> border wall. It w- it wasn't at the bottom of a pizza shop like everyone knows it is. I know that's <laughs> the pizza shop was part of the distraction. That's the distraction oh. wall. Uh, yeah, once they reveal the location of the Red Room, you then know, like, three things that are going to have to happen. And there's also, like, a lot of the shots from the trailer uh, are in the final action sequence. Oh, so you know exactly yeah. how the movie has to end. And I found that to be really disappointing. They really blew it, I think, with the trailer in this one in particular. Because the whole movie, I'm like, well, this part has to happen. It hasn't happened yet. So I know what's going to happen. Well, they're doing lip victory laps for how much money they made this weekend, both in theater and streaming. So they made, they said, sixty million bucks. I think uh, eighty off, million off of just off the Disney Plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then one hundred sixty-three million from actual actual box office. But uh, like, I, we win, I, and I'm like, I wouldn't say this is my favorite Marvel movie, but yeah, it's not for, the worst. It's not the dark me, world for me. It's definitely on the upper half of them. Uh, I'd I say was, it's in the bottom half. I'd say it's I not was, as good as Ant Man and the I Wasp, was you know. Very pleasantly surprised at how much I like this movie. But part of it could be that I thought I was gonna hate it. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I had no expectation for it. No, I, I think that's reasonable. I, I think that, you know, I, I, I don't put it that high. I mean I put it below Dark World. I put it you know, Oh wow. Below Ant Man. Well, I put it above Dark World, but below Ant Man and the Wasp, you know. <laughs> um but yeah. I have to chunk. I'll make the, it through it at some point. I have to chunk the Marvel movies into the bad ones, the acceptable ones, and the great ones. And I put this one in in the acceptable, uh, leading towards it's, good. It's better than the drunk uh, Iron Man. Uh, so, Iron Man two is garbage. Uh, Iron Man two is garbage. The first Hulk is garbage, and Thor two is weak as hell. I. Uh, I. The rest of them, for the most part, I'm okay with, but like I can see the argument against like against like Ant Man and the Wasp, like not being that strong. But 
Uh, I think it's better than this one. I think that most of those are all just, they are acceptable popcorn fluff movies that don't transcend anything. This tried, but failed uh, in that regard. But I think I'm with you on the one thing, Rob, which is that uh, while I thought, if, if you didn't know who Taskmaster was, maybe you wouldn't care, but nothing about that character felt like yeah. Taskmaster to me. And right. I found the reveal of who that character was, while really cool from a story perspective, the fact that they kept the character masked through the whole movie really meant well, that I, I gave no Fs I, about who it was. I, I thought it was pretty obvious too, not that it was necessarily the person it was, but the kind of person without giving any spoilers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought, hmm. This is what they're going to do with that because they haven't had him talk yet. Yep. This is going to be stupid. <laughs> well, there were there were only two choices. Uh, well, it's kind of like the Mandarin. They're going to bring the Mandarin back for real this time. Yeah. So, yeah. In Shang Chi, it's going to be a real Mandarin and not whatever yeah. that Mandarin was. That that I absolutely hated. I can't stand that movie because of that. Now I was so angry. <laughs> and, right? and I loved. I, I I absolutely loved Ben Kingsley's performance. I thought it was one of the funniest. I think it's hilarious. Ever filmed, but at the same time, I'm like, but that's not the. Really? Not at all. What are you doing here? You know, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I like. I actually, upon reflection, I really like from a story perspective how Taskmaster worked uh, mm. in, in the story. Uh, but the pro my problem with it is that they should have just not held that back as a secret, and they should have like revealed who this character was, so you could have some emotional stakes between mm -hmm. Scarlet and look, here's the Terminator. It's just the Terminator. It's a, a faceless, emotionless robot that's coming to kill you until the last and, 10 seconds. And and maybe don't call him the Taskmaster, right? Because that's a person who has a long a story. Back story. <laughs> right? right? He has so. important training to do. Right. Uh, maybe you call it the Traskmaster, huh? Sure. Tie it into the X-Men universe. Oh, oh. Or or the ask master, you just ask him to do something and oh, he doesn't. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and, he's, he's, and he's super polite about it. Because he's yeah. basically just a robot that you program. Or the yeah. axe master, he's a lumberjack. Uh, you know, that'd be all right. Yeah. Ooh, no, ooh. I, I oh, think no, no, that... The cask master, ooh. he's a really wonderful vintner. I just wish that uh, that the Taskmaster at some point said anything so it was a character that I cared about and not just a cloud chasing me. You know, like well, that's... Yeah. Every now and again, they'd it's show like you God. a heads-up display, you know, so yeah. you knew he was a <laughs> cyborg or something. Right. Uh, An Iron man is you know. Well, here's the thing, though. When you show... They show Iron Man uh, in his helmet all the time, and they show his yeah. face... With the digital, with the, with the digital, right? Yeah. In this, they only show the computer, and it just it made that character a non-entity, and it ruined any sort of empathy, any third sort of like it just took the stakes out of it for me. Like mm. I know what they did. I thought what they did with the story was really cool. I just mm. needed, I needed something in there to make me care about that character besides just at the the reveal at the end. Maybe. Maybe uh, it was a robot designed to help the Catalans and the Basques in their civil war. It was a Basque mm. master. Or, oh, it was a Bass master. It was a really good fishing robot. Bass master? A Bass master. All right, yeah. like a cast master. Well, there was that TV show, Bass Masters, remember? Oh, we know. That used to run out. We know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and cast masters. The cast masters is far superior. Oh, okay. Well, that also works. They, you know, they are a troop of you know? of people who do trick casting. Trick I'm not casting. lying. It's yes. real. No, no, no. I I believe you, and I bet you, it's actually a very charming show to watch, as long as it doesn't go into Duck Dynasty, you know, weirdo territory. You know, the Cast Masters Bass Club. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I remember seeing that stuff when I was a kid, going, "Wow, these people really like fishing." You know, that was that was what I took away from those shows. I'm like, wow, they're really into fishing. I don't know if I could ever be this into fishing, but I admire the craft. The the format has changed now to make it more environmentally friendly. Like you have well, to row how there. How was it unenvironmentally friendly before? Before you catch the fish, you put them in live well, you take them back, and you could only weigh fish that were alive, and a bunch would die because they oh. were sitting in a little, you know, holding yeah, cell basically. Yeah. 
So what they do now is they have a person from the organization on each boat with a digital scale. Hmm. And as soon as they catch the fish, they weigh it and then throw it out uh, or throw that's it nice. back in the water. Yeah, that's very, you know, and you know why they do that? Not because of some greeny lefty environmentalist thing, but because fishing's important. You got to preserve the fish. They'd so like to catch fish catch next them. year too. Right. For, yeah. for all the bass masters in us all, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of, it, I, I find a lot of dignity in these shows. I think they're great. Your it's like watching somebody master. who's really good at their thing. And you're like, wow, it's cool that they're in that thing. I'm not going to watch it, I'm, but I admire I'm it. with you. I find proficiency very interesting to watch. You know right? what I mean? And so why, pray tell, would they show us that the not really Taskmaster character when they could have had a Bassmaster? Ooh. The MCU you know? does need a fish-based hero. Magnum P.I. understands us. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's right. All right, folks. All right. Let's say goodbye. <laughs> go go to our the important our important day jobs. Uh, goodbye, Chris Bye. Let me know if you managed to decode the contents of that tape. Uh, goodbye, Rob Roseboom. See you later. Uh, I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda. This was episode 638 of Geeks in Space, and we'll see you. We're skipping the movie this week. We'll see you Friday with news. Bye.